In the first line setting, abiraterone and enzalutamide are highly effective. More than 80 or 90 percent of patients will respond, and so there isn't a major unmet need for a biomarker that will distinguish responders and non-responders because most of patients do respond. However, one of the biggest disappointments of each of these drugs is that they share resistance mechanisms. So when you use one drug followed by the other, the second drug tends to be less effective and vice versa. So if you start with enzalutamide and then switch to abiraterone later, abiraterone is much less effective than the same drug if you'd never had enzalutamide. And so the cross-resistance became uh, a very important topic of discussion and management. And so there is a need for a predictive biomarker that indicates that cross-resistance. And the measurement of these androgen receptor variants becomes more and increasingly prevalent as the disease progresses and resistance develops. For example, if you do a circulating tumor cell test and measure ARV7 in the blood of men who have not yet had abiraterone or enzalutamide, the prevalence of a positive test is pretty low. It's about 10 to 12 percent, meaning that most patients who have the test are negative, and most patients likewise will benefit from these therapies. So the clinical utility of such a test is fairly limited in that, in that frontline setting. However, if you look after abiraterone or enzalutamide, the prevalence of a positive test goes up to about 20 to 25 percent. And those patients tend to really have no benefit from the crossover therapy to the oral drug, abiraterone or enzalutamide, after the frontline oral therapy. Uh, these patients who are ARV7 positive tend to benefit from other therapies, though. Docetaxel, cabazitaxel, radium are all effective therapies in patients that have ARV7-driven tumors. The V7 patients do have a poor prognosis. Uh, having ARV7 is associated with other poor prognostic factors, such as having widespread metastatic disease, high-grade disease, many other genomic alterations are likely present in these cells. So we haven't yet figured out a way to kill the V7 positive cells other than with chemotherapy and radiation. When a physician uses enzalutamide and abiraterone in the clinic and in the laboratory, we see a wide range of resistance mechanisms, not just ARV7. For example, with enzalutamide, there are agonistic mutations in the ligand binding domain that can turn enzalutamide from a blocker into a stimulant of the cancer. That is apparently very uncommon. Under 10% of patients studied to date have these mutations, and it seems fairly rare. Other um, pathways that may be aberrant mean, uh, include loss of AR function, so this neuroendocrine phenotype of prostate cancer where the tumor essentially no longer cares about the androgen receptor. And, Drugs that block the androgen receptor essentially have no effect on these tumors. These anaplastic or aggressive variant tumors, really the indication uh, for these treatment um, options include docetaxel chemotherapy, platinum-based chemotherapy, and novel approaches. Other more transcriptional pathways that are upregulated include the glucocorticoid receptor, which has been implicated in enzalutamide resistance as well as other pathways. There's you know, about 12 to 15 different mutations in each prostate cancer patient that confer a selective growth advantage or a resistance to cell death. Every patient with prostate cancer has his or his own unique mutational spectrum of disease-modifying uh, mutations. So this is where the personalized medicine approach does come in because each patient carries with him a, a set of unique uh, mutations that make the tumor aggressive. Androgen receptor variants may be associated with different mutational signatures. We just haven't discovered what those are yet. ARV7 is associated with poor prognosis, whether it's with abiraterone or enzalutamide. And trying to block ARV7 is really an ongoing active area investigation. With abiraterone, uh, as opposed to enzalutamide, you have agonistic mutations where the prednisone that you use as part of the abiraterone can turn uh, the androgen receptor into a stimulating uh, receptor. And so there's some unique mechanisms that are unique to abiraterone versus enzalutamide and vice versa. The cross-resistance um, is one of the biggest issues in clinical practice, and community oncologists have recognized this by using these oral-oral sequences. When you use ABI after ENZA, the response rate is down to about 20, 30 percent, lasting three to five months. Same for ENZA after ABI. The response rates are just very low and very short-lived. And so the decision to switch a therapy becomes very important. Uh, we generally recommend, according to the working group guidelines, not to switch a therapy based on PSA changes alone, but when other manifestations of the disease start to worsen, such as radiographic changes, new metastases, growth of existing metastases, symptomatic progression, 
that becomes a real trigger and a need to switch therapy. But often that uh, is dependent on what that switch to is. If, if the switch is to docetaxel chemotherapy, there may be a reluctance to switch right away to that therapy because of the side effects of chemotherapy. Um, often we're now looking at combination approaches, and so the switching question is a little less important um, uh, as we're looking to add on therapies, uh, such as radium-223. The important point of identifying resistance is that every patient is likely to have his own unique set of mutations that created the tumor in the first place. For example, about 20% of men have DNA repair alterations, BRCA1, BRCA2, ATM. These gatekeeper mutations unleash a wide number of additional mutations that make these tumors highly aggressive, such as p53 mutations, MYC gains, uh, neuroendocrine transformations. These are very difficult to target, but an active area of research. Uh, it's important when you're seeing a patient with prostate cancer to consider a mutational uh, profile, such as through Foundation One or a number of other commercial platforms that can really look at a host of mutations that are highly individualized to that patient. ARV7 is not presently part of those biopsy-based mutational profiles. The ARV7 assays are really moving into the cl clinic more as a liquid biopsy rather than a solid biopsy.